Okay. I think that in pursuing explo how the uh, how the buildings collapsed, we we are missing a major point, which is that Al Qaeda so far is absolutely succeeding in its objectives in sending those planes into those buildings. How, how are you sure? Okay, never mind. I think because you'll find because Bin sir? Laden said so to oh. draw us into huge okay. unwinnable yeah. wars, drain okay. our I economy, think you'll find and, 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 and along, more enemies. Uh, along those lines, sir. Uh, you referred to Richard Clark, who described his hair as on fire and the White House is ignoring him. And look at the other bit of evidence from former Treasury Secretary John Snow, who said at the very first cabinet meeting in late January or February of 2001, it was clear that Bush and Cheney were planning to invade Iraq. They were simply looking for a pretext. So, uh, you know, I believe that needs to be fully investigated. And the 9-11 Commission spoke to Bush and Cheney in private, not under oath, without any record whatsoever. Now, that's bogus. Thank you very much. Thank Over you. Over here, Thank sir. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to make two comments, one relevant to the extra information that the gentleman said uh, that for those of you who can investigate, there's a gentleman, William Rodriguez, who was the janitor at the facility. And the Twin Towers had five levels below the, the surface floors. Mr. Rodriguez, as the lead janitor, was in the second floor on the day of the bombing before the plane hit. And if you read his account, I'll just summate it here very quickly. There was an explosion below him, which blew him off of his feet, which knocked out the elevator. And he was given an award later for he, he having the key to the master key to the elevators where he led multiple people to safety, and he was actually touted as a possible Republican congressional candidate until he started to speak the truth of what happened to him. So if you investigate William Rodriguez, second of all... I'll just uh, add that I've should... interviewed Willie Rodriguez, and he's highly credible. Yes. Yes, and second of all, I'm Don Grinneman. I'm the vice chairman of the American Independent Party in California here, their biggest party in the state. I don't know what other parties are doing, but I can guarantee you that the American Independent Party will support you in all your efforts. And I invite other political parties in the state to join us in our efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, if we could get your uh, business card, that would be fantastic uh, afterwards. We'll make some connections. We'll be happy to speak to any group of people uh, anywhere that we can. We recognize you, sir. Go ahead. I'll speak to the issue of uh, the people that I've talked to and... Uh, many others probably like them. Um, I think the, the audience here is predominantly convinced that there is at least a need for a, a fresh investigation. Uh, there are people who don't want an investigation. Most of them didn't show up. A few, a few who might disagree with that premise had the courage to show up, but most of them don't don't ever come out to something like this because they, they there seem to be two kinds. One was very happy with the explanation they got. It served their political purposes. The original government explanation does everything they want and, and, and they're quite happy with, with all the various results that are turning out. Either it's benefiting them economically or politically or both perhaps emotionally. Do you have a question? And then there are other people. No, I don't. I just want to <laughs> Well, at least you're I honest. I just what we're trying to do is not have people come up and make speeches because we've pretty much heard them all. And what we want to do is have questions for our guests today. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very appreciate much. it so much. Over here, sir, in the, the, the cap. Yeah. Uh, I do actually have a question uh, directed to uh, Tom Sullivan. Um, uh, Tom, would you come up? Uh, and Kamal, why don't you come up too? There might be some questions for our structural engineer and our tech explosive technicians. Okay. Uh, I'm his ride home. <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> Who has the keys? Okay, well, uh, first, <laughs> first I'd like to, to say... Who has the keys? <laughs> first I'd like to say is, is uh, I've, I've heard your speech before and, uh, and it's, it's developing, it's much better. I, uh, I've been studying this for quite some time. Um, my question for Tom was uh, about the hole in Building 6, um, what his thoughts were on that. And I re recognize that uh, you're going with a sort of an entry-level type of thing here, and, and that might be a little bit different.
But uh, regarding the forensic evidence that uh, uh, Well, let's talk about Building 6 since you yeah, mentioned certainly. it, and then you can ask your second question. Yeah. There's a, about a 20-foot a crater inside of Building 6. Um, and, and in fact, there's a couple of them. Some people believe this is some sort of um, uh, uh, weapon from, from some, some other place, um, uh, a, a, a directed energy weapon. Others believe this is evidence of controlled demolition that it was only partially successful. So that's what the gentleman is referring to. Relative to other theories like directed energy weapons, uh, the possible use of, of, of many, uh, many nuclear weapons uh, used at the Twin Towers, or in fact maybe no planes actually hitting the towers because there's video fakery. These types of alternative theories uh, are uh, not productive in terms of showing the science-based forensic evidence to the, and, and, and convincing the American people that we need a new investigation. They're incomplete sets of phenomena that don't have hypotheses that are supported by a strong set of scientific facts and, and, and evidence. So we don't use them when we try to make our point for a new investigation. So I wanted to take the opportunity to make that point. Having said that, I see that Tom is here. Come on up, Tom. Um, glad he didn't take my car home. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. You, now, um, did you look at Building 6 yourself? I don't know if, if, if you have. Uh, th there's a 20-foot yeah. hole in Building 6. This is some information that the gentleman's offering for your review. Maybe you can review that. We can go on to the next uh, question. No, oh, oh, over here. Oh, this is what, for, go this ahead. Is for a What's your question. second question? Uh, Tom, can you uh, take a look at that picture there, please? Take a look at this? Yeah. Okay, and, and tell me what you're seeing there. Why don't you guide him a little bit and us? What, what, is, what are we supposed to be seeing in this photograph? Well, just look. Okay, tell us what your agenda is, please. Okay, uh, my, my question is, is the shapes of the objects that are in those plastic buckets? Okay, okay I'm looking at do you Do you think that the shape of that object is consistent with a Monroe effect device? The what? What? A Monroe effect device. Do you know about Monroe effect device, Tom? I'm sorry, I don't. I, I don't either. I've never heard of it. It's a shaped charge. Again, I mean, I'm only familiar with what we use in, in, in the yeah, context. Yeah, it's a, it's a linear, the, shape, the linear shaped charge. Right, but we didn't use, we used what I said was uh, uh, RDX uh, yeah. copper jacketed charges. Yeah, but so, shaped. Uh, shape is a cutter charge. Correct. Right. Uh, in, in, do you think that what's in that bucket is consistent with that? The, so you well, guys know the picture uh, showed the us the bucket, bucket appears brigade. to be full of plastic uh, well, pieces and debris. Yeah, I mean, from where I stand, as I said before, uh, as far as the charges we use, RDX-based copper-jacketed charges, mm -hmm. uh, when they are initiated, they essentially are consumed. There is nothing left. So what I'm looking at here is not doesn't let me think that there's a, a this is debris left over from a shape charge. Okay, so alternatively then, um, wh what are those firemen picking up and why are they doing that? <laughs> Let's go no on to idea. the next question. I think we've given this one uh, no, no. enough time. Sorry. Go All ahead. Right. Doesn't Thank you very much. Over here, sir. Okay, a uh, couple of questions. So the. Uh, right after the thermite information came out, somebody had sent me an e email, I think Carol Boulay or somebody, and I then went and saw it on the primary journal, and then it was pulled, you didn't mention that, maybe it's still up there, but that article disappeared shortly thereafter, and you should probably mention that if it still disappeared, I mean from the primary journal, that scientist that you mentioned published it in a very credible journal, and then that, that disappeared. Well, then, so the second... Are you, talking to, are you talking about the NIST report that I quoted? No, no. The, uh, the, the Chinese science, thermite the, report? Yeah. The, some scientist, a, a very credible scientist, published an article about thermite and the 9-11 event, and, then, and it was published in a peer-reviewed journal. And then that, and then that article disappeared.
very shortly after. I went well, on the web and it was it's, there. It's, it's up on the web now. It's I, still there. I read it about six weeks ago. Uh, uh, I, okay. I've looked right. sooner than that. It's still there. Okay. It just might uh, be hard to find. And then the second thing was uh, Van Jones, he you know, had to fall on his sword because he signed a petition, a, related, a very mild right. petition related to 9 11. And I never saw the 9-11 Truth Movement support him much, at least maybe I wasn't aware of that. Because well, he, he backed he, off he, the sword uh, faster well, than he fell on it. Um, well, he, so he for this, for our area, excuse me, he controlled m many billions of dollars related to green jobs. He was at a very high-level position that, you know, and, and so we sacrificed probably the only radical person in the Obama administration.